Hello everybody and welcome to my AEW Collision Review as we are 24 hours away from Christmas Eve. What do you celebrate Christmas or not? Let's get into this Continental Classic Tournament as we are the finals of tonight of the Blue League live from San Antonio, Texas. So yes, let's get right into it as we kicked it off with Brian Danielson versus Claudio Castanoli. Honestly, I thought this was the best match of the whole show and it ended up being a draw between both of these guys. The time limit ran out, so... um. Basically, I believe both of these guys get a point, if I'm not mistaken, each out of um, you know, out of the finals of all out of all of this. Uh, obviously, Daniels does Danielson moves on to the semifinals. I'm not really surprised. I figured he was gonna beat Claudio, but it ended up being a draw though. Uh, Claudio ended up finished with seven points, but like I said, Danielson's going to the um semifinals. Him and um, you know, Danielson and Claudio shook hands after that. So hell of a match to kick off the show for Collision tonight. Like I said, best match out of the whole show. Definitely enjoyed it. Um, right after that, uh, we got the acclaimed. Uh, we haven't really seen the acclaimed for a while since they were beat up by the mask guys. They end up going against Top Flight and Action Andretti. Billy Gunn, uh, looks, like I said, these guys look like dwarves compared to Billy Gunn out there. Billy Gunn looks like a giant. Um, I don't have much to say about this. Uh, the bars were okay with, um, Caster. I understood some of the references. I thought the delivery could have been better, but um, overall, the match itself, um, you know, it, it, not bad. Uh, Caster up winning a roll-up on Andretti for the win. So, um, yeah, uh, the acclaimed one from there. Uh, right after that, um, Keith Lee went against Brian Cage. Um, Keith Lee won, and this, you know, this wasn't a bad match, I will say. Probably one, maybe one of the better matches with Lee. I know uh, people don't want to keep Lee's health uh, a lot. Uh, when it comes to his matches nowadays, but uh, he ended up winning, hit the big bang attack uh, for the win. Right after that, though, he said someone, what, took him out for two months with a cinder block, and he's trying to send a message to him since there was a cinder block in the ring throughout this match. He said he's going to di Dynamite to make that message clear to that person, and uh, he has a house to tear down brick by brick, which I don't know why he just doesn't say swerve. He's the guy that took you out with a center block before. I don't know why you're saying someone and him out there. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, dude, just say his name. You don't need to, like, say he. Like, we already know who took you out before with a center block. It's not that hard, all right? So, Keith Lee versus Swerve, which, by the way, they're trying to continue this feud at this point where I don't really care anymore. It's a feud that looks like it's dragged on forever, and we haven't even seen a match with Keith and Swerve at this point. All it's been is just the, what, mogul guys are just, you're saying they're gonna, they do this all the time. They say they're gonna do it, like, they, they kind of go on the feud, then they disappear off the feud. Now they're back at the feud, and they'll probably just disappear, and they'll go away from each other for a minute and still come back and won't have a match. Maybe they'll have a match finally, I don't know. But this is a feud that's gone on literally nowhere to no end in sight, which it doesn't even care about anymore. Swerve, obviously, at least is getting more stuff out here nowadays than I can say with Keith Lee, but um, why are we still continuing this thing? I don't know. Um, Tony Storm was in the back. Uh, Tom Byron match coming up next week on um, AEW World's End. Um... Basically, I guess, talk about Mariah May there. That she's trying to be acknowledged. Christian Cage and Nick Wayne came out. Um, Christian Cage had the TNT title, and he talked about, you know, he could have done this on his own, which they brought out Nick Wayne's mom, Shayna Wayne, and man, this was hard to get through on the microphone. Yes, I get why she's there for this whole story, and her obviously she's going to make a point here, but still, why is she talking that long? Because she's not really good on the mic, but... She said, how dare you? This is my son. Edge took out my kid. Um, you know, she. I watched him get his head smashed in with a chair. What choice did she have? Uh, what other loving mother would do to protect their own kid? Um, she says she cares for her son, that she cares uh, for Christian Cage. Um, people still expect something to go on with both of them, but it hasn't happened, I guess, or ever. Uh, Christian Cage basically said this woman has worked as a waitress for $40,000 for a year to support her son. Um, Edge tried to take that away. Uh, he said, um, Edge, basically, you know, he should have showed some empathy because, you know, your mom worked a whole crap, bunch of crappy jobs so you can live your dreams out here. But, um, you know, Christian said, you know, I wish your mom was still alive so she could disown you. And, you know, he's doing this. Christian, Christian said he's going to beat him in this no DQ match that he's uh, offered up and say he's going to do this on the behalf of all the single mothers in the world. And, um, you know, he's going to basically take him out and it's not going to be a good night for him. 
edge. It wasn't a good night for him in Montreal. So um, he said he's going to retain, you know, retain the title. And um, that's kind of it. Which his thing, though, you know, it's a no DQ match, and I know the challenge is accepted, but you know, Edge is gonna have to fight like three, four other people out there. And cause his thing, you had a regular match with Christian. Shayna Wayne ended up coming out and, you know, taking Edge out with the title belt. So, what does having a no DQ match really help if there's going to be multiple people being involved? Which, I right know there's going to be a lot of interferences out there uh, when he fights Christian again next week. So, uh, I'm assuming Edge will be bring back up. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, Ricky Starks and Big Bill were in the back. Talking about, I guess, their next challenges for the tag team titles since it won't be the Golden Jets and Kenny Omega is being sidelined indefinitely right now due to diverticulitis. Saying, you know, they, they said that, um, what, Kenny doesn't have the guts to cape, face him and um, Big Bill saying that his Uncle Joe uh, had, had uh, what, done worse than um, than um, Kenny Omega. Chris Jericho say, uh, yes, Kenny is out indefinitely, but we're not forfeiting the challenge. He will. He signed a contract. He doesn't know who his partner is gonna be, but he's gonna make sure he beats them and take those tag team titles away. Uh, B- Brody King, Brody King versus uh Daniel Garcia, uh one of Everise guys on commentary. I gotta say, this wasn't a bad match. It was a little bit surprising with the upset win for uh Garcia. Uh, he was getting the hell beating him out in that match, but um he ended up rolling up um Brody King for the win uh to pick up a few more points. So, um, Garcia got the upset win here, but right after the lights went out, House of Black show up, um, what, Matt Menard tried to get in and help, but, um, he got taken out, uh, they were gonna take out Garcia, but FTR came out and, um, basically chased them off, and he said, I'm tired of this, um, you know, you want me to be part of your family, I'll be part of your family, like the uncle that, you know, beats you when he's drunk on tequila, and um, basically said, we're going to face the House of Black. I'm assuming that's at the pay-per-view next week or whatever show they put it on. But I'm going to su- assume it's um, it's going to be on uh, what? World's End by next Saturday. So that's when I see the match happening. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, next, uh, Thunder Rosa and Abaddon versus Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Thunder Rosa is back. She's in her hometown. She even came out on a low rider. The funny thing about this match is that they announced it's supposed to be Abaddon versus Julia Hart for the um, TBS title next week, but none of that really mattered here. Honestly, yeah, they promoted it, but it, watching this match, it didn't make you really care about Abaddon or Julia Hart in this. This was all about Thunder Rosa making her big return out there. Like I said, the match... Um, no, the match wasn't bad. Not surprised Sky Blue took the pinfall here. I know that she got new gear now. And make sure you can see her. You can see the wedgie and see more of her ass sticking out. Uh, making it try to look as big as possible. But, yeah. Thunder Rosa ended up getting the pinfall on her uh, for the win. So, like I said, I don't think anybody really cares that much about Julia Hart versus Abaddon anyway for the TBS title. And this match did not help really promote that match either. This was all about Thunder Rosa making her big return uh, since vacating the um, AEW Women's Championship. So, she's back. Uh, but in the main event, we did get Eddie Kingston versus Andrade. I know they tried to say that five-minute overrun thing, which it didn't really matter because the show went off like a 9-on-1 anyways. But Andrade ended up getting... Not Andrade, but Eddie Kingston ended up getting the win on Andrade, hitting him with the back fist, and then the, uh, what? Uh, Emerald Flosion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, some type of suplex he did uh, for the win. Or maybe it was a brain buster. But Eddie Kingston got the win, no. Uh... Which now would make it a one-on-one between him and Danielson. Not no triple threat that like we saw on Dynamite uh, last Wednesday. But uh, it's now it's going to be Brian Danielson versus Eddie Kingston next week. Uh, to see who will move on in the finals of this whole thing. So we're getting a rematch with both of them. Do I think Danielson could win this whole thing? Yeah. But then again, Eddie Kingston is still the Ring of Honor and what, New Japan Strong Champion. So I'm not surprised he even made it this far. Anyways, he's the one holding those current two titles. We even know what the last title looked like, but he is still the Ring of Honor and New Japan Strong Champion. Uh, which one thing I will say, they had to make sure they acknowledge Hiroshi Tanahashi being the new New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, cha- um, president right now, the president of NJPW. Don't know what... What's going to happen with NJPW, but obviously it's probably going to be a lot of changes, but uh, we'll see about that. Maybe something about Wrestle Kingdom, but uh, I know they ran out of time, so it ended up being Brian Daniels and Eddie Kingston just kind of having a face-off before the show went off the air. Okay, obviously with AEW right now, I can't really say it's 
that hot. Good matches with this tournament, though, as usual. Nothing much to say about that. But it's been said from the beginning, and my friend Kyle said this, too. Like, I think I've said from the beginning. It's Tony Justin does more matches than he does tell actual stories out there. But good matches, though, within this tournament, nonetheless. Okay? Uh, but then again, AEW has enough problems with enough of, what, executives and officials leaving right now. But that's a story for another time. Overall, though, um, like I said, Dynamite, not Dynamite, but Collision, not bad. Most again, it's just mostly off these um, tournament matches. Good to see the return of Thunder Rosa back in the ring. That Shayna Wayne promo was kind of brutal to get to through until Christian got on the mic and saved the rest of that segment. Keith Lee versus Swerve, I don't even care or want to even see that again anymore at this point. But for some reason, we must revisit that feud. I don't know. Best match out of the night, though, Danielson and Claudio. So, yeah. Other than that, that's my review of AEW Collision. So, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Hoodie Night 890 Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. And happy holidays to everybody out there. I'm out of here. I'll see y'all then. Peace.